Apple's brand new M2 MacBook Pro has finally been released, but many are asking the question, is it worth spending the extra cash on the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro? Well, in this video, we are gonna answer that question by comparing basically everything between these two MacBooks, including the designs, the displays, the speakers, the microphones, the SSDs, and real world performance and actual tasks that you guys use all the time. And a big one that I'm personally curious about is actually the battery life, because right here I have both of them charged up to 100%, and as we run all of our tests throughout this video, we are going to be looking at how it drains and see how much each one is left with at the end of the video. So with that said, let's go ahead and unplug both of them and get right into the comparison. Now the first thing I want to mention is the specs of both machines. This is the base M2 MacBook Pro, that's $1,300. It comes with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD. Now this one comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 512, so basically double of each, and it's actually on sale on Amazon for $1,800 right now. And the interesting thing is, if you match the specs of the 14 inch on the base one, you're actually sitting at $1,700. So if you were to spend $100 more for the same specs and you're willing to get 512 and 16, you're basically getting this entire machine with a lot of different upgrades as I'm going to show you in this video. So that's definitely something to think about and you'll find those links in the description and pinned comment below. Now before we get into talking about the displays and the actual performance, I want to close these down and point out some of the differences on the exterior. Now you guys know that the 14 inch has this brand new redesign that looks really good with these rounded corners and a completely flat bottom and top compared to, of course, the M2 MacBook Pro, which is basically reusing the same MacBook Pro design as the 2016 MacBook Pro. So this is definitely dated. So if you're buying this, you're buying a really old design that's basically getting outdated at this point. Comparing the thickness, the M2 MacBook Pro is technically thicker at its thickest point, but because of the chamfer design, it looks a lot thinner compared to the 14 inch, which is basically flat on the top and bottom. So it looks really thick and chunky. Now in terms of the weight, the 14 inch is half a pound heavier, partially because of the larger design and larger display, but it's also packing some goodies on the inside as well, which I'm gonna get into in just a minute. Getting into the ports, the M2 MacBook Pro just has two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side, compared to two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the 14 inch, and a MagSafe 3 fast charging connector, which I personally love. And of course it has the headphone jack with support for high impedance headphones. And then on the other side, the M2 also gets a high impedance headphone jack. However, the 14 inch gets an HDMI port. It's actually 2.0. It also gets an SD card slot and another Thunderbolt 4 port. Now to me, those extra ports are a huge deal because they really do come in handy, especially the HDMI and the SD card card slot because on the M2, you gotta use one of those ports for the actual charging, leaving one left over for whatever else you wanna connect to it. So having that vast amount of ports on the 14 inch is a huge deal. Now the next thing I wanna get into is the actual internals because there are a lot of differences. First of all, you can see a lot more vents on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Right here on the sides there are vents. There are three separate vents on the back right here compared to the M2 MacBook Pro that just has the slim vent right in the back and that's all. And speaking of the cooling systems, the M2 MacBook Pro just has a single fan, but the 14 inch has two of them and they're bigger and thicker and the heat sinks are larger and the heat pipes as well. So the whole cooling system is just beefed up compared to the M2. And on top of that, there is a huge difference in the speaker systems because the 14 inch has a six speaker system compared to just two speakers on the M2. But a huge difference that we can see is that on the M2 MacBook Pro, there are two spots for NAND SSD chips and only one of them is being filled compared to the 14 inch, which has four spots with two of them filled. So I'm gonna show you why that is a big deal in just a minute. The trackpads on both of these MacBooks are almost the same. They feel very similar and they're basically the best trackpads out of any laptop out there. The keyboards are both really good with the keys on the 14 inch being a little bit better because they have a little bit more key travel, but the M2 MacBook Pro is basically the last MacBook that's gonna be coming with the touch bar. So if you like that, you can go with this, but I personally like the entire hardware function row on the 14 inch. 
And now let's compare the speakers. I don't know about you guys, but that was a massive difference. Now the speakers on the M2 MacBook Pro aren't bad, but they sound bad compared to the 14 inch because these just pack so much bass, mids, highs, everything all together. They sound amazing compared to the 13 inch. Now these are better than a lot of other Windows laptops, but the 14 inch just kills it. Now jumping into the webcams and microphones, the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro still uses the same 720p webcam as it did for years, but they did kind of update the software a little bit so there's more contrast there, but check out how the 14 inch looks. Right away you can tell that the image looks more natural, you can see more detail in my hair, it doesn't look like it's over sharpened, and it does have the 1080p webcam, and it should have better microphones but you guys be the judge of that and let me know down in the comment section below. Now getting into the displays, there is a huge difference here. First of all, the 14 inch MacBook Pro has that notch, which at first look, it looks kind of annoying, but I have the 16 inch at home and I've just completely ignored it. I don't really notice it anymore. And I really appreciate the thinner bezels that come alongside that notch. Look at that, the bezel difference is huge compared to the old M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. Those are huge bezels, especially at the top. Now, as far as the actual display panels themselves, the M2 MacBook Pro uses a regular LCD panel with 500 nits of brightness, but the 14 inch has a mini LED panel, which means that it actually has different zones where it lights up that creates more brightness up to 1600 nits peak and 1000 nits sustained across a full white page, which is pretty amazing. Not only that, but you get deeper blacks, more contrast, which means when you're watching videos at night, you don't have those big gray bars that you have on the LCD display with the M2. It looks a lot nicer. However, with that, you can have the issue of blooming where you can see a little bit of glow if you have a really dark image with some bright spots. But overall, it is a lot better, especially since you can download the Vivid app where you can manually increase the brightness up to a thousand nits all the time because usually it's just 500, but with that app you can have up to a thousand. And that app is a lifesaver if you're gonna be using your MacBook outside. Now not only that, but the mini LED display is a must if you're gonna be doing HDR photo or video editing, so that's a big bonus. But my favorite part about the 14 inch MacBook Pro's display is 120 hertz pro motion support, which means the refresh rate is doubled compared to the M2, which is stuck at 60 hertz all the time. So everything is gonna look a lot smoother, including if you're playing some games at up to 120 hertz. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into all of our performance testing, starting off with an SSD speed test. We have Blackmagic open right here, so let's go ahead and run it. And wow, this is absolutely insane. The write speed on the 14 inch is almost three times faster, 4,000 compared to around 1,400 megabytes per second. And the read speed is 3.6 times faster on the 14 inch, 5,400 compared to 1,500. Now, the main reason is because one of the spots for the SSD NAND chips is empty on the M2, whereas the 14 inch has four total spots with two of them being populated. So because of that, the speeds are drastically reduced on this base 256 gig model. Now, if you get the 512 gig of the M2, it actually goes up to around 2200 for the write and 2900 for the read, which is still a lot slower than this 512 gig M1 Pro. And now let's move on to Geekbench 5. The first thing I'm gonna do is the CPU test, but I wanna mention that the M2 chip is running at 3.49 gigahertz. That's the speed of the high performance cores compared to 3.22 on the M1 Pro. So there's a good chance that the M2 is gonna have faster single core performance, but let's test it out. We got our scores and this is actually very interesting. In terms of the multi-core performance, the 14 inch with the Bend 8 core CPU 
is 12% faster. And that's across a wide variety of tasks and not necessarily a full 100% load, which we're gonna test out in just a minute. But going over to the single core, the M2 is actually 9% faster than the M1 Pro. And that's because it has the newer cores that are putting in more clock speed. And that's gonna help the whole system feel more snappy if you're not maxing out the RAM. Now that boost in single core performance should actually help web browsing performance as well. So let's run speedometer 2.0. And look at that, we have a score of 402 runs per minute on the M2, which is a record breaking score, faster than basically any consumer laptop or computer out there. And it's actually 39% faster than the M1 Pro, which is shocking because the single core performance was only 9% faster. So web browsing is gonna be insanely smooth and snappy on the M2. Now moving on to the graphics side, this M2 MacBook Pro has a 10 core GPU compared to the binned 14 core GPU on the M1 Pro. And here we have our scores. We have 39,000 for the M1 Pro and 30,000 for the M2. That's 29% faster on the binned 14 core M1 Pro. Now moving on to a more realistic gaming benchmark, this is 3 d Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited limited mode, which means it's off screen. Let's go ahead and run this and see a more realistic type of workload. All right, we have our scores. We have 55.4 FPS for the M1 Pro and 41 for the M2. Now this is actually a bigger difference, 35% faster on the M1 Pro. So this is gonna help for a variety of tasks, especially for gaming. And now let's move on to the CPU stress test running Cinebench R23. This is gonna be the 10 minute test. But before I get into that, I wanna do an initial thermal reading with our Seek thermal camera. Now over on the M2 MacBook Pro, you can see that we're idling at around 29 degrees Celsius, 28 right there. And going over to the 14 inch, it's the same, 29 degrees, actually right there at the top where the heat vents are at. Now what I have open right over here to the left is the power metrics. This is an app called Acetop, which is very handy. So we're gonna use that to track the frequencies and the wattage. So let's go ahead and start our multi-core test. Right off the bat, we're seeing the temps shoot up on the M2. We're sitting at 82 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 84 compared to 74 on the M1 Pro. Now in terms of the wattage, the M2 is sitting at around 19.5 watts being used compared to around 22 watts on the M1 Pro. So it's not using that much more power, but in terms of the peak, it looks like the M2 hit 23.7 watts compared to 24 watts on the M1 Pro. So it's literally right next to it in terms of peak wattage. And in terms of the actual frequencies, we're sitting at around three gigahertz for the M1 Pro and 3.2 gigahertz for the M2. And in terms of the fan speed, it looks like the M2 is running a little bit faster. We're sitting at 2,600 RPMs compared to around 2,300, 2,500 for both of the fans on the M1 Pro. And now the M2 is really starting to heat up. We're sitting at 96 degrees Celsius for the CPU compared to 92 on the M1 Pro. So it's staying a little bit cooler. So what I'm gonna do is let this run until the end of the test and we'll come back with some updates. Now looking at the actual cores themselves, it looks like some of the performance cores on the M2 are reaching over 100 degrees Celsius, 101 right there, compared to the M1 Pro, it looks like the hottest performance core is sitting at around 95. Actually, I just checked into a set to the average CPU temperature. I just switched it to highest and I saw it go 102 right there. Look at that, 102. We actually had it hit as high as 104, 105 in the past. And the crazy thing is I haven't seen the M1 Pro go above 97 degrees at all, even though the fans are spinning slower than the M2, which is sitting at almost 4,000 RPM compared to around 3,000 average on the M1 Pro. All right, so we're past nine minutes into the test, so I wanna give you guys an update with the thermal camera. Let's look over at the M2 MacBook Pro, and we have a huge heat spot right there. I saw it hit 41 degrees Celsius, 40 right now on the M2, and on the M1 Pro, 44 degrees Celsius. So the actual area near the chip 
is hotter on the M1 Pro. And the reason the M1 Pro is showing 44 degrees Celsius is because the cooling system is more efficient, so it's pulling more heat from the actual chip itself, allowing the chip to run cooler, which means that you're gonna have less issues with heat on the chip and less fan noise as well. And there you go, the test is finished, and the M1 Pro is scoring 9.5% higher than the M2, while using around 13% more average wattage than the M2. And now let's move on to our Xcode programming test, which is gonna give you a good idea of how much performance you're getting for different programming tasks. And to do this, we're gonna do the Xcode benchmark. And we have our scores, it looks like we have 119 seconds on the M2 and 108.5 on the M1 Pro. So in reality, the M1 Pro isn't that much faster, but if you really need as much performance as you can get, there's also the unbinned 10 core model of the M1 Pro if you pay a couple hundred dollars more. And now let's move on to the Logic Pro benchmark, which basically puts a stress test load onto the CPU to see how many tracks it can handle playing at once before overloading the system. And as you can see, the M1 Pro is currently running 135 tracks while we just failed trying to run 80 on the M2. Now this is barely improved compared to the M1 model for some reason. I personally think it's because they tried to push the clock speeds more on the M2 chip, so that's why it might not be as stable. So what I did is I turned the tracks down to 78 on the M2, but it's still overloaded before finishing one loop, which is unfortunate. So I'm gonna take one away, let's try 77, while the M Pro has been running 135 tracks with multiple loops right now with no issues, so it's definitely the better laptop for music production. Now, if you wanna choose the M2 model, then you should probably be getting 16 gigabytes of RAM at a minimum if you're gonna be using a lot of plugins. And now let's move on to testing photo editing in Lightroom Classic. The first thing I'm gonna do is cycle through some photos to see which one switches quicker and so far, it looks like the M1 Pro is actually consistently switching to the next photo quicker than the M2. And that's likely because the SSD is so much faster on the 14-inch MacBook Pro. And now what I'm gonna do is export these 50 raw 42 megapixel photos on both of these machines. And I do wanna mention that we don't have any background tasks that are using up the RAM because in our previous video, we loaded up on the RAM and we noticed because of the slower SSD on the M2, it did impact the performance negatively. So keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and export these. The M1 Pro is blasting through. It's almost done already, which is crazy because the M2 isn't even 50% done at this point. There you go. The M1 Pro just finished and now we gotta wait on the M2. So the M1 Pro flew through that test and we were wondering why there was such a big difference. And we noticed in the settings, there's a new GPU acceleration option and the M1 Pro had it automatically turned on to use the GPU for export, but the M2 did not. So we went ahead and turned it on and now let's retake test it. All right guys, this is really weird because we reran it with the GPU turned on and the M2 barely improved. It went from two minutes and seven seconds to two minutes and two seconds with GPU acceleration turned on while the M1 Pro finished in 55 seconds blazing fast. Now this is really weird because the M2 barely improved and I think it's because of the RAM being a limitation with the eight gigs potentially being slowed down by the slow SSD speeds. I'm not sure, but we are gonna be doing a full dedicated video with two versions of the M2 MacBook Pro, one with eight gigs and one with 16 gigs of RAM to see what differences we can find with that RAM difference. And now I wanna test Affinity Photo because it has a built-in benchmark that that is very optimized for metal. And we have our scores, it looks like the GPU is 30% faster and the CPU is 15% faster. So a pretty good improvement with the M1 Pro. And now for those of you who like to use Photoshop, we're gonna go ahead and do an HDR test, basically combining nine different photos into one to see which one does it faster. Bam, the M1 Pro just finished, still waiting on the M2. And there you go, the M2 has finished. Looks like we have around 13 seconds for the M1 Pro to load up that HDR scene and 20 seconds for the M2. 
That is a huge difference, 54% faster on the M1 Pro. So if you're doing this all the time, like a lot of photographers are, that's gonna be a huge deal for you. And now moving on to video editing in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna start off with a fairly easy test. This is a 4K H.265 HVC file. Now playing it back, both of them have no problem at all. This is actually with two LUTs and film grain, so some added effects. And as you can see, there's really no difference between the two, so if you're doing common stuff like this, you're really not gonna see that big of a difference. So let me go ahead and export this five minute clip. All right, now this is actually very good news. The M2 is pulling ahead of the M1 Pro. Now, neither of them are using a ton of resources. That means they're both limited by the encoders. So it does look like the new encoders and decoders on the M2 are improved even faster than the encoders on the M1 Pro. And there you go, it looks like the M2 finished in two minutes and 20 seconds, while the M1 Pro finished in two minutes and 25, so just a little bit slower than the M2. Now that is awesome news because this is a less expensive machine and you're getting slightly faster video editing, but keep in mind that this is actually with not that many effects or hard footage. This is very simple HVC 4K, so let's go ahead and do a more stressful test. And another nice thing about the M2 chip is that it also has a ProRes engine, whereas the M1 didn't, so it better matches up to the M1 Pro. So let me go ahead and play this footage. This is ProRes RAW. It says a five minute timeline. So for those of you who are wondering if the M2 can decode ProRes RAW, it looks like it can because as you can see, the CPU usage is very low. It's staying at around 14%, which means that the ProRes Media Engine is working on this ProRes RAW footage. And while this footage is playing, I can definitely tell that the M1 Pro is using less of the GPU to process this footage compared to the M2, which is using around 79% so that means that the M1 Pro is gonna have a little bit more wiggle room to add some more effects while still having smooth playback. And now let's export this five minute clip. And there you go, the M2 has finally finished and wow, that is a huge difference. The M1 Pro finished in a minute and seven seconds and the M2 finished in two minutes and 14, so exactly twice as long. And that is because the ProRes engines are so fast that both machines are GPU limited. And of course, the GPU on the M1 Pro is faster, but it also looks like we might be dealing with some differences in potentially the SSD speed or maybe the RAM as well. And keep in mind, this is just with Final Cut Open. If we add more tabs, more apps, there is gonna be more slowdowns with this M2 machine because of that slow SSD. And now let's test out some really tough footage. This is 8K Canon RAW in a 4K timeline, five minutes once again. So let's go ahead and export. Guys, this is insane. I just saw 107 degrees Celsius on the M2 MacBook Pro. Looks like the M1 Pro is 103, 108 degrees Celsius on the CPU on the M2, that is absolutely insane. This is definitely some very tough footage. It's maxing everything out, the CPU and the GPU. Huge stress on both of them, 108 degrees Celsius. I'm starting to hear the fans. The M1 Pro is already at 5,000 RPMs. The M2 is catching up 4,900 right now. Yep, there you go, 5,000 as well. I can definitely hear that it's a little bit louder on the M1 Pro side. This is crazy. This is putting an extreme load on both of these MacBooks. The fan on the M2 is maxed out, 7,200 RPMs. It is loud, a little bit lower on the M1 Pro, looking at 5,800, 5,300 on the M1 Pro. All right, so now the test has finished and the fans have cooled down and we made some crazy discoveries. First of all, the M1 Pro finished in 11 minutes and 21 seconds, while the M2 finished in 19 minutes and 40 seconds, significantly slower. Not only that, but we decided to run Acetop while it was running and take a look at the wattage and the frequencies, and we made a crazy discovery. First of all, the M1 Pro was able to stay at 100% CPU and GPU basically the entire time without any glitches or stutters. However, the M2 chip, it was overheating like mad. It was hitting up to 108 degrees Celsius, 
while the fan was completely maxed out 7200 RPMs without stopping. However, what we noticed was it would drop down from around 105, 108 degrees all the way down to the 80s in terms of the CPU temperature. So we looked into it and it was basically cutting off the CPU going down to under four watts used for the CPU, which basically shows that this fan in the M2 is not enough to cool down the M2 chip. It did everything it can, maxing out the fans, but it wasn't enough, so it forced the CPU down significantly just to cool it down before going into another wave of maxing out the chip. Now the M1 Pro did not have any of those issues. It was able to run at full performance and the fans weren't even maxed out like they were on the M2. So basically Apple needed to put a better cooling system or bigger fan in the M2 MacBook Pro, but of course they didn't because they decided not to change anything about the design. So with all that testing now out of the way, before I reveal the final battery life differences, I do wanna mention that Max is gonna be doing a full video editing comparison going through Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and Premiere Pro going in depth with the M2 chip and comparing it to the M1 Pro. So definitely subscribe if you want to see that. And now for the moment of truth, the battery life. I wanna first mention that we started filming at around 9.45 and now it's 2.13, so just about four and a half hours of filming and testing, performance testing, everything and let's take a look. We have the M2 MacBook Pro at 29% battery life, and the M1 Pro is at 17% battery life. So it's not that big of a difference, especially if you look at Apple's website, and it seems like the M2 gets a lot more battery life. So in reality, it seems like you're gonna be getting about an extra hour of battery life with the M2 MacBook Pro if you're using your MacBook for performance tax. And don't forget, that the M1 Pro also has MagSafe 3, so it's gonna be charging about twice as fast as the M2 MacBook Pro. So based on all of those tests, here are my personal recommendations. Well, first of all, if you're planning on already getting 16 gigs of RAM or 512 gigs for the SSD, you can pay just $100 more, 1800 bucks for the M1 Pro MacBook Pro on Amazon right now on sale using the link below. I would definitely recommend that because there are just so many ways that the M1 Pro is better than the M2. You have the faster SSD, much faster performance, performance, you have the new design, all the ports, basically everything about it, including the display, it's just a much better machine for just $100 at those specs. And if you're not gonna push your MacBook that hard, then I would honestly just recommend going with the M2 MacBook Air because you can get it for a cheaper price and you have the new features with the redesign and MagSafe 3, so I'd say the M2 MacBook Air is a better choice for those who aren't going all out on performance. So thank you guys for watching, and if you wanna see how the M2 MacBook Pro will perform with 16 gigs of RAM compared to eight, then definitely click the circle button to subscribe because that video is coming up very soon, and check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.